Welcome to another video. Every algebra student starting from ninth grade knows how to find the distance between two points because almost everyone who has ever taken mathematics at algebra level knows Pythagorean theorem. But Pythagorean theorem only works if you're given Cartesian coordinates. If the coordinates you're given are polar, you may not know how to find the distance between two points because when it comes to polar coordinate, are you going to go straight or you have to go along the curve and in what direction? There are infinitely many paths between two points. So, but if it's on a plane surface, there is only one straight line that can join them. So that's why it is easy for you to do Pythagorean theorem if that's all they gave you, coordinates. They give you Cartesian coordinates, x, y, x, y. But in this case, we're given polar coordinates and we're asked to find the distance between the two points. The most important thing is you know how to convert a polar coordinate to a Cartesian coordinate. Convert r theta to x and y. Once you do that, you go back to your Pythagorean theorem and you can do whatever you want to do. Let's get into the video. Like I said, the first thing we need to do is to change these coordinates to the Cartesian form, even though we don't have numbers, but we just follow the same principle. So we know generally that x is always r cosine theta and y is always r sine theta. Now we don't know what r is, we don't know what theta is, so this exercise really expects us to do all our calculation without numbers. You have to do the algebra. Okay, so now we have two points. So it means if I want to generate the Cartesian coordinates, the two um, values for the points on this first part, I'll have to do two things. So let's call this point point one. So for point one, we're going to have x1 and y1. And for point two, we're going to have x2 and y2. So you notice that I can easily formulate what my x1 is because my x1 is r1 and theta1 that we have here. So on this side, we're going to say the first point is the point x1 is going to be r1 cosine theta1 comma r1 sine theta1. So this is x and this is my y. On this side, I'm going to get for point 2, I'm going to get r2 cosine theta2 and r2 sine theta 2. So I have the two points. So we have now transitioned from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. So now this is x, this is y, this is x, this is y. So remember, this is the same thing as x1, y1, x2, y2. And remember, we just have to use Pythagorean theorem. So distance. The square of the distance between any two points on the Cartesian plane is equal to, we're going to say, the difference between the two x's squared and the difference between the two y's squared. So it's going to be x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, we just need to plug in the values. So the first one is going to be What's x2? r2 cosine theta 2. So we have r2 cosine theta 2 minus x1. That's r1 cosine theta 1. Okay, and we need to square it. Plus r2 sine theta 2 minus r2 r1 rather, sine theta 1 squared. So now this is the sum of two squares. We can't do difference of two squares, so we have to expand them individually. Okay, don't make mistakes and watch me. This is what we have. If we square this, 
it's going to be this squared, r2 squared, cosine squared theta 2, minus, remember when you square a binomial, you're going to have the product of the two in the middle with minus 2 multiplying it. So it's going to be minus 2 times the product of this and the product of this. So this is going to be r1 times r2, r1, r2, then cosine theta 1, cosine theta 2. Cos cosine theta 2. r1 squared, cosine theta 1 squared. r1 squared, cosine theta 1 squared. That is the top part. So now I need to take for the second one. That's going to be plus. This is going to be the square of this is going to be r2 squared sine squared theta 2 minus 2 r1 r2 it's going to be this the product of these two it's going to be sine theta 1 cosine sorry sine theta 1 sine theta 2 come on sine theta 2 plus the square of this, r1 squared, sine squared, or oh, this is cosine squared. Let's put the square here, sine squared, theta 1. Okay, it looks promising. Now we're supposed to add. So the good thing about what we have is they look similar. So this is r2 squared, this is r2 squared. We can actually factor out whatever is common. So d squared, let's still write it here, is if we add this to this, we're going to factor out r2 squared. And what is left is going to be cosine squared theta 2 plus sine squared theta 2. You can already see that we get 1 here, right? Now, if you go to the middle, Oh, we can factor this out. This is going to be equal to minus 2R1, R2. And then we're going to have, this is minus, so we factor it out. What is left is going to be cosine theta 1, cosine theta 2, cosine theta 1, cosine theta 2. Because we factored out the minus sign, this is no longer going to have a minus sign, it's going to have a plus in the middle, plus sine theta 1, sine theta 2. That's what you have there. There's one more term. We need to deal with these two. These two are going to give us r1 squared. So this is going to be plus, let's write it here, plus. If you factor these two, you're going to get r1 squared. And what's left is going to be cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. Nice. Okay, we know this is 1 by the Pythagorean trig identity. This is 1 and this is 1. This is the only thing that is left that is crazy. But we know this in the double angle identity for cosine. The double angle identity for cosine, whenever you see addition between the product of cosines and the product of sines, then it is cosine a minus b. Okay, so it is the cosine of this angle minus this angle. That's it. The difference between, and it doesn't matter whether it is theta 1 minus theta 2 or theta 2 minus theta 1. Remember, cosine is an even function, so don't worry about which one comes first. It doesn't matter, it's the difference between them. Okay, so we can say d squared is now equal to r2 squared, okay, minus 2 r1, r2, nice. And then this angle here is cosine theta 2 minus theta 1. Remember, it doesn't matter whether it's theta 1 minus theta 2, okay, cosine is an even function. And this is going to come in here, plus r1 squared, because this is 1.
So that's it. So the distance between these two points we're talking about is d. It's going to be the square root. I don't need to put plus or minus because we're measuring distance, right? Okay, it's always positive. And then we're going to put this under, and that's it. Theta 2 minus theta 1 plus r1 squared. This is the distance between two points given their polar coordinates as r theta. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.